are you concerned about AI taking over your job that suddenly one day a computer will know everything, can do everything you do, only do it better? What if you're an author? Can, can a computer write a short story? Inquiring minds want to know. Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and about a week ago, MJ, for reading this life, convinced me that I, I should uh, check out ChatGPT. I don't necessarily check it out for the same reason that MJ checked it out. I was curious about whether ChatGPT could write a short story. Last year, when the Garbology anthology was announced, I sat down to write a short story for that. My problem is not with ideas, not with characters, not even motivation. My problem is I can't write a first sentence and then write a second sentence to follow it up and then go on to the third sentence. Don't even think about a fourth and fifth sentence or a second chapter. It's just not coming out of my brain in fully coherent sentences. So my short story never went very far. But I said, what happens if you input ideas into chat GPT? What can an AI do as an author? So I tried some experiments and I will read those inputs to you, and then read you the results. The first story is um, a framing story for what would have been a collection of three or four shorter short stories. And the whole idea of this is that there is a man in a retirement home who inherits um, a storage unit full of some very strange books. And it is a collection of short stories from these strange books. I am just going to go ahead and read you what I inputted into the GPT prompt and then show you what I got back. Here's my input. Write the first few pages of a novella. The story is derried by a Jewish widower in his late 70s. He is living in an assisted living apartment building in a city. He, is a re he has been retired for quite a few years. He was a criminal for all his adult life, but worked as a clerk at a hardware store that never got very many customers because it was a front for his criminal activity. He will not admit that he is a criminal, but he will hint at it. He was never a violent criminal, but he had lots of illegal business, shady business, and extramarital affairs. He has two adult daughters living away from him. He, the eldest daughter knows he was a criminal background, but the younger daughter does not. The man is worried that he is going to be killed very soon. He has inherited a key to a storage unit that belonged to a friend in the assisted living building who, was recently, who has recently died. There is something very odd in the storage units. He called his friend Samuel Beckett because he spoke French with a peculiar accent. And here is what chat GTPT gave me back. Chapter one, the key. The view from my window is the same every morning. It's a strip of gray sky hemmed by the brick buildings of the city. And down below the courtyard where the other residents shuffle about like ghosts with nowhere to haunt. At 78, I suppose I'm one of them. Just another specter waiting for the final curtain. But unlike the rest, I have a nagging feeling that my show might be ending sooner than expected and not in the usual way. 
They call me Mr. Green around here, a simple name for a simple man. My daughters, Leah and Rachel, visit when they can. Leah, the eldest, is a sharp one. Too sharp, perhaps. She's got an inkling about my past, about the years I spent at the dusty hardware store on the corner of Elm and Forth. She knows it was never about hammers and nails. Rachel, on the other hand, believes the facade, thinks her old man was just a clerk with a penchant for a quiet life. Maybe it's better that way. The real story of the store? It was a front, plain and simple. We never saw more than a handful of real customers a day. The rest of the time, it was deals and handshakes, packages in and out, the whole bit. I wasn't a violent man, never hurt anyone if I could avoid it, but I was knee deep in the muck, all of it. I had a knack for finding the angles, the sweet spots where the law didn't quite reach. Affairs too, plenty of them. I wasn't proud about it, but it was the life I chose. Now, here I am, a widower living out his twilight in an assisted living apartment, haunted by memories and an ever-present sense of dread. You see, my friend Samuel Beckett, no, not the playwright, although he had a certain theatrical flair, died last month. Samuel spoke French with the oddest accent, as if he learned it in another lifetime. He was an enigma, and when he passed, he left me a key not to his apartment or his safe, but to a storage unit on the outskirts of the city. The, the key sits heavy in my hand, a tangible link, something I'm not sure I want to discover. Samuel and I share a certain understanding, a bond formed not by friendship, but by mutual necessity. He hinted at secrets, things that he had squirreled away in the storage unit. I never pried. I had my own secrets to keep. But now, with him gone, it falls to me to uncover whatever he left behind. The residents here talk, as old folks do. They whisper about Samuel, about the strange comings and goings in the middle of the night. I pretended not to listen, but I'm taking it all in. They don't know the half of it. They don't know that Samuel wasn't just an eccentric old man with a love for French literature. He was part of something bigger, something darker. And now with that key in my possession, I fear I might be the next in line for whatever fate he met. I should get rid of it, toss it into the river and forget the whole thing. But, the cure, but curiosity is a funny thing, especially at my age. When you've lived a life like mine, curiosity isn't just a passing fancy. It's a force, a compulsion. Besides, there's a part of me that wants to know, needs to know, what Samuel thought was worth hiding. So here I am, staring out at the same gray sky, the same courtyard, but with a mind churning like it hasn't in years. Today might be the day I finally drive out to the storage unit and see for myself what lies within. Or maybe I'll stay put and let the mystery remain. Just that, a mystery. After all, some doors are better left unopened. So what do you think? I think Chat GPT in me a solid. It's not a great short story, but it um captured a little bit of what I was thinking about. And it had some flares that I did not put into my original description. I was impressed enough that um I did a few more experiments. With this one, I, I had a, a, a little bit more of a short story idea. It is not a complete short story. 
Um, I got to the end, or not even the end of my description, and I just sort of petered out and I didn't want to do the rest. So I sort of left it open-ended. And um, ChatGPT did a very curious thing with my, my uh, little story idea. Because short stories have beginnings, middles, and ends. I did not give an end in my description. So ChatGPT provided one for me. First again is um, my description that I gave ChatGPT. Write a short story about Simon. Simon is 55 years old and a lazy corporate businessman. He is never very good at his jobs. He changes jobs every three to four years. Simon has been like that since graduating from college. He has some savings, but not a whole lot, just a little bit more than the average American. He has been divorced three times and is currently single without a girlfriend. He has an adult son from his first marriage, but he doesn't have a lot of contact with the son. He has a daughter from his second marriage and has to pay child support, but he strongly suspects the child isn't his, although he's never gotten tests to prove it. No pets. All Simon's ex-wives say he is a do-nothing and going nowhere kind of guy. He is currently in good health, no major medical issues, and is just a little bit overweight. He is going bald. He wears glasses. His main hobby is watching old movies and has a very large collection of them. Simon is concerned for his future because he knows that most employers in the area know he's a very bad reputation as a lazy worker prone to making errors. There have been two major life-changing events for Simon in the last month. First, he has been fired from his job. He got caught by a colleague Charles fudging business records to cover a mistake he made. Second, he inherited a fully paid off house from his aunt in a 55 plus community. The aunt was in her mid 80s and she died in a freakish accident on the highway. The aunt didn't have a will, which is highly unusual, but he is the next of kin according to state law. Members of the aunt's community want to contest his inheritance of the house, but they don't give a specific reason why. Simon moves into the aunt's house because he has nowhere else to live and can't afford rent. The house is fully furnished, but it's decorated in an old lady style many decades out of fashion. He meets a next door neighbor in his early 90s. The neighbor is very standoffish to the point of rudeness. Simon takes a box of his favorite old movies out of the trunk of his car. Simon looks all over the house for a DVD player or a VCR player, but the old aunt didn't have any modern devices. Simon is very sad. Now, that's not the complete story. The story would have eventually gone on, to discover that um, Charles's daughter, about nine years old, is missing. And he notices that, um, that his next door neighbors are having a feast. And when he spies upon them, he discovers that his uh, next door neighbors in this retirement community are ritualistic cannibals eating children to stay alive longer. ChatGP never got that part. But here is what chat gpt gave me for the information i provided simon sat on the edge of the bed in his new house the floral wallpaper clashing with his somber mood the room smelled faintly of lavender and old books a testament to his late aunt's tastes he sighed looking down at the box of his favorite old movies resting at his feet what was he going to do without a DVD or VCR player? Watching those movies had been his only solace after losing his job. It had been a month since everything fell apart, 
At 55, Simon found himself jobless once again, this time because of Charles. Charles, the colleague who had caught him fudging business records, hadn't insisted to report him. Not that Simon could, had insisted to import, report him. Not that Simon couldn't blame him. He'd always been careless, never quite good at his jobs, and always looking for shortcuts. The dismissal stung, but not as much as the knowledge that he had nowhere else to go. His three ex-wives were right. He was a do-nothing, going-nowhere kind of guy. Divorced three times, barely in contact with his adult son, and paying child support for a daughter he suspected wasn't his. Simon's personal life was as much of a mess as his professional one, but he never had the courage to confirm his suspicions about his daughter, fearing what the truth might bring. The only glimmer of hope had been the unexpected inheritance. His aunt, a woman he hadn't seen in years, had died in a freak accident on the highway leaving behind a fully paid-off house in a 55-plus community. The house was a blessing, albeit wrapped up in the awkwardness of a life he hadn't planned for. The community members were contesting his inheritance, though they hadn't given a specific reason why. Moving into his aunt's home, house, sorry, moving into his aunt's house had been his only option. He couldn't afford rent, and his savings were modest, just a bit more than the average American. The house, fully furnished in an old lady style, was decades out of fashion, and now his reluctant sanctuary. As he wandered through the house, Simon's fingers trailed over the doilies and porcelain figurines. He felt out of place, an intruder, in a life that wasn't his. The next-door neighbor, a man in his early 90s, had greeted him with cold indifference. Their interaction had been brief and standoffish, the man barely acknowledging Simon's presence. Today, Simon had hoped to find some comfort in his movies, but without a way to play them, his melancholy deepened. He slumped into an armchair, the springs creaking under his weight, and stared at the box of tapes and DVDs as if willing them to magically start playing. A knock at the door startled him out of his revelry. He opened the door to find the elderly neighbor standing there, his expression as stony as ever. Hello, Simon ventured, unsure of what to expect. The old man's gaze swept over him before settling on the box of movies. You like old films? Simon nodded. Yeah, they're kind of my thing. A flicker of something, curiosity perhaps, passed over the neighbor's face. I have an old VCR player. I haven't used it in years, but it might still work. Simon's eyes lit up with a rare spark of hope. Really? That would be amazing. The old man hesitated, then shrugged. Come by tomorrow. I'll see if I can dig it out. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Simon said, genuinely grateful. As the neighbor shuffled away, Simon closed the door, feeling a small sliver of hope. Maybe, just maybe, things could start to look up. He had a lot to figure out. How to make a living, how to deal with the community's objection, and perhaps even how to reconnect with his children. But for now, he had an unexpected lifeline, a chance to lose himself in the comfort of his old movies. That night, he went to bed with a sense of purpose, however small. Tomorrow, he would begin to navigate this new chapter of his life, starting with the neighbors 
VCR player. It wasn't much, but it was a start. And for Simon, that was much more than he had dared hope for in a long time. I have no idea how ChatGPT put that uh, little ending to me or, or to this story. I think it's because there's a, the algorithm that says stories must have endings and I didn't provide an ending. So it invented one wholly different from um, my idea of a cannibal cult in this community. Really rather curious. So what do you think of ChatGPT's stories interpreted from my input? Are they truly terrible? I don't think they're truly terrible. They're certainly lacking. They're not completely whole. There are some gaps and fudges that are not quite right. But overall, I'm kind of impressed that ChatGPT could get that much out. And I'm saying that because um, I have two other experiments that I did with ChatGPT. I'm not providing them in this particular video because it's already creeping up towards 20 minutes and may go over. So if you want to hear more of ChatGPT stories with a little more input from me as a complete story, let me know in the description and maybe I'll make a second video about these stories. Thank you for watching and keep on reading.